put out that the sun shines down its power to all the world and makes the wind blow strong as it will. I want to hope gentle rains can fall upon the land so lovely earth can stay lovely still. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Energy Week with George Harvey, me, and the amazing Tom Fennell. In the flesh. Philosopher <laughs> and philanthropist, <laughs> I think. And or something like something that. <laughs> <laughs> something like that. And um, this is uh, being recorded on the 14th of March. So we're doing the previous seven days. So we're going back to Thursday, March 7th, uh, for, our, for our, our material. It is now Energy Week number 308. It is the 308th edition of Energy Week. And uh, it, Energy Week is based on my blog, geoharvey.com, G-E-O-H-A-R-V-E-Y.com, where you can go and get links to the, to the various news uh, items that we talk about. Uh, the the uh, blog has a calendar. You can click on the calendar to... Uh, get to the day that, that we're talking about and then scroll through. I usually have um, 10, usually 13 to 15, but sometimes 11, you know, whatever, um, items each oh, day. Daily. Oh, yeah. Uh, daily, yeah. Each, each of these is represented by a 50 or 55 word synopsis and a link to the original article. So if you go to March 7th, you can find the um, first item that we're going to be talking about. Which is from Green Tech Media. It's from Green Tech Media. And it is called, <coughs> well, we need a picture. We have We've a got picture. got a picture coming up here. All you got to do is put it up. You yeah, know. we got a picture. There you Minnesota go. Minnesota and Wisconsin join a movement to shift to a 100% carbon-free grid. The governors of two states are pushing, go of the two states, are pushing goals to have 100% of electricity be carbon free by 2050, a 2007 law required Minnesota's electricity to reach 25% renewably sourced by 2025, but the state has already achieved that target by the end of 2017. Bingo. Bingo. <laughs> there you go. I mean, things happen twice as fast as you try to make them happen sometimes. A little interesting backstory. Both of these governors are Democrats yep. who won election in November after running on platforms that included support for clean energy. Right. Okay, so they're riding a wave here. Yeah. And this okay. wave, by the way, is all across the United States. Oh, it's it growing. Is, yeah, we'll be talking amazing. about that again. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Hawaii, California, Washington already have laws requiring 100% renewables by 2045. Right. Illinois is talking about, they haven't done it yet, but they're talking about a bill to make electricity 100% renewable by 2050. But right. in addition, it outlaws nuclear eventually. Okay. In, which is which interesting. Is, is it's more than half the power in, in uh, Illinois. Yeah, it's, I forget the number of nuclear pl uh, reactors in Illinois. I think it's nine. It's a whole bunch no, of them. No, it's, it's more than ten. It's, is it I more, think it's wow, 11. It's, it's a bunch. I think it's 11. That okay. step away from nuclear, I would say, is a big step, except for one thing, and that is nuclear power is expensive. And even keeping a nuclear, the cheapest thing about nuclear power is when the reactor is paid down, you can keep it going very cheaply. But it turns out. Like at night? No, no, no. I'm talking about oh. when it's paid down. Oh, well, okay. Years yeah, after yeah, it's yeah. Put Once in. you stop paying the uh, interest on the loan. Absolutely. <laughs> but the problem is, even so, it's more expensive than It's still than more wind. expensive. Okay. So, you know, why. Time marches you, on. Time marches on. And those old plants. Are more and more of them require um, financial assistance from the states to keep them open? Well, we'll be talking about that. We will indeed. And Illinois is one of the states where this is being considered. So, what else you got on that, Tom? Anything? No, I got, I got everything I was going to say about that one. Well, good. Let's go on <laughs> to energy storage news. Ah, uh, this one is Statcraft, a company. Yep. Their latest one gigawatt virtual power plant in UK combines renewables, storage, and gas. Yeah, and this is interesting. It is. Stodcroft 
partnered with Energy and Meteorological Systems um, to launch a one gigawatt wind, solar, and battery storage virtual power plant in the UK. And by the way, I saw other reports that made this two, mig two gigawatts, but I just thought I'd mention that. Okay. Um, Stadtkraft uh, <laughs> one operates. One gigawatt's okay already. So well, you're, one gigawatt's big already. So one gigawatt two, is huh? big, yeah. Stadtkraft operates Europe's largest virtual power plant, a 12 gigawatt plant. One gigawatt is big already. This is 12, with over 1,400 wind and solar installs in Germany. This is a pretty big plant. It, this is this is huge. This is the size of 12 big nuclear power plants, and these virtual yeah, power plants give extremely reliable power. It's it's virtually 24/7. 365 and a, and a quarter. And, and in that sense, you know, if you think about baseload power, nuclear power has the highest uh, capacity index. Capacity, uh, you know, the, 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 the amount of time it's on. This stuff has got a capacity factor that's almost 100%. <laughs> that's amazing. It's, it's like it's always amazing. just chugging along. But a little bit about Stotcraft, because I didn't know who they were. Yeah. I looked them up. They were hydro. They're basically a hydropower company, but right. they're in all aspects of power now. Yes. They're owned by the government of Norway. Yes. <laughs> okay. So I don't know if you're buying power from them. Is that socialism? <laughs> if you're you, not, you in know, Norway? I, I am so fed up <laughs> with. I, I, I've, I'm not making any secret of the fact that I voted for Richard Nixon twice, and I voted for Gerald Ford, and I voted for Ronald Reagan twice, and I voted for George Bush twice, <laughs> and I voted for Bob Dole, and I voted for George W. Bush, and I am fed up with conservatives <laughs> talking about socialists as though it is it is the devil incarnate. Well, we'll the, talk about that a little, the a little later, The last time too. I voted, I wrote in Bernie Sanders because he's the closest. <laughs> He's the closest thing I could find to a genuine patriotic American conservative. That's interesting. It's yeah, well, interesting, he had it? a platform that was virtually identical to Theodore Roosevelt's. The, look at Theodore <laughs> Roosevelt. My God, who would ever have called in his day Theodore Roosevelt a conservative? I mean... A socialist, you mean? I mean a socialist, yeah. yeah. Well, he was the one who was down on big... He was down on big uh, um, businesses, and he was... You know, well, times change. Times change. Okay. Anyway, sh do we have more about that? Uh, I, nothing significant. Okay. So, let's, let's so we'll on. go on to an item from Utility Dive. Still Friday, March seventh. Still on Friday. Uh, no, this is on. Uh, still on Thursday. Thursday, yeah, March seventh is what I meant. I'm <laughs> okay. sorry. Industrial consumers oppose evolving Pennsylvania nuclear subsidy proposal. This is industrial well, consumers. here they go, you know. <laughs> this is industrial consumers, the ones who really depend upon that power being the big there users. all the time. Yeah, but they want that power there all the time. All the they time, don't want to close right? down. So industrial energy consumers in Pennsylvania are lining up to oppose an evolving proposal. She wouldn't have thought that. No, you would not have thought it to support the state's nuclear plants set to be released soon in the state's General Assembly. They said the bill would increase taxes, pushing them to cut jobs. Well, a bill is going to direct, if it, if it goes in and it's passed and signed by the governor, it's going to direct the utilities to purchase power from the nuclear plants. Yes. Whether you want it or not, or whether it's cheaper yes. or not. This is and that's a why problem. the big guys are complaining. They say, you know, this is going to cost us money. This is conservatives pushing socialism. Bingo. <laughs> <laughs> the world is so weird. Um, Interesting little backstory. If the legislators don't pass a support package by June 1st, Exelon has threatened to begin shutdown procedure at Three Mile Island. Which I think Which some is on its way out anyhow. Yeah, of course. <laughs> the thing that's sad about this is the way that it's structured. In order, in order to shut, if in order to rid themselves of that plant, bef it, before they can shut it down under this under this law, they would have to put it up for sale and find that there's no buyers available. Mm -hmm. If the plant is sold to a buyer, they have the to subsidize. The utility would have to buy, buy the, the power. plant's power. <laughs> and you know, you sounds like a sweetheart deal for some. Uh, <laughs> for anybody who can come along and buy a nuclear power plant, how much are they? Uh, is there a limit to how much they can charge? I don't know. 
Anyway, there it is. Well, there it is. Huh? So we're up to Friday, March 8th? Friday, March 8th? Which I had, the I had previously up. said Friday was March 7th. And, of course, there is a Friday, March 7th, but not this year. Not this year. Yeah. But we got another picture coming We do, up. and this is an item from Clean Technica. And let's get the picture off. <coughs> okay, we got the picture. That's an ugly and picture. <laughs> <laughs> that is a battery storage plant. Yes, that's right. All those white things are battery storage. Interesting. Yep. Uh, well, let's, let's talk what is about it. Wood McKenzie. Wood McKenzie sees utility-scale battery storage doubling in 2019 and tripling in 2020. That's a pretty strong rate of growth. It's growing quickly. Wood McKenzie's latest report on utility-scale battery storage forecasts strong growth this year, followed by even stronger growth in 2020. One thing that is especially interesting is that the growth is based on simple economic considerations. Say that again. That's a significant. This is based on <laughs> simple economic yeah. considerations. In other words, they can make money or save money by installing these batteries. Well, that's what I was just about to tell you. It's all about recognizing value. Right. Okay. And the utilities are recognizing storage as value. Right. Okay. When they look at it, they pick it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Massachusetts, New York, and New Hampshire promise more storage activity. Yep. Puerto Rico plans to add 900 megawatt hours of storage. That isn't a lot. They're going to add more. Oh, yeah. Puerto Rico? Absolutely. Arizona Public Service is proposing to add 850. Hawaiian Electric will add 1,000. That's current. I mean, yeah. It's going to increase. That's going to increase. Because yeah. it makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Move along. Move along. We're up to an item from Bloomberg. What am I doing here? I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> Trump, again, seeks deep cuts in renewable energy funding. Yep, this was all over the Internet, and we have to be careful about this because what he's seeking and what he's going to get are not necessarily the same thing, and in fact, they're almost certainly different things. The Trump administration is said to be seeking deep cuts in spending on renewable energy and energy efficiency research again. An official familiar with the plan said the Office of Energy Efficiency and Energy uh, Renewable Energy um, could, would see I I the budget request for it cut by about 70 percent. Well, this is what he's asking for, but he's not going to get well, it. Well, he didn't get it last time no, when the, when the House was controlled either. by Republicans. The, the, what happens is that this, this bill goes to the, to the Congress, and the con congressmen are getting phone calls and text messages and emails and <laughs> what are you doing? snail mails <laughs> saying, we want this. And this Office of Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy, we've talked about it before. They do some good stuff. Yeah. Okay. They finance research into electric cars. Right. Wind power, solar and storage. And they help make the cost of wind power competitive with coal. Cut the cost of LED lighting. Right. So Which these guys are doing some, the some good Trump stuff. Administration he wants, wants to cut it. Wants to cut it, you <laughs> see. The Vision has recently announced research into hydrogen and batteries for heavy duty trucks. Yep. And Trump wants to shut these programs down. Well, you know, it, it's not a surprise, but I have to say that it's selling this country out to, to try to sell them down, out. We have got, in worldwide, right now, we've got a, an electric bus market that's something like $50 billion a year. Yeah, well, United look at China. States, the Chinese dominate One town's that. got more than that. <laughs> <coughs> well, not... They do, one city. <coughs> they have 16,000 of them in, one, in, yeah. in Shenzhen, and we have about 2,000 of them in the in whole the United whole country. States. But, you know, the Chinese have something like 90 or 95 percent of that market. And the United States has barely got its toe in the water. And we are not pushing things. And on top of everything else, these solar tariffs that, that Donald Trump had put in ostensibly to protect American jobs mm -hmm. has, has cost it's costly the jobs. solar costly industry costly possibly job. more jobs than the whole <laughs> coal industry has. That's unfortunate. It is. Well, the Heritage Foundation is on the ball here. They've called for this office to be eliminated entirely. Eliminate what? The Office of Efficiency and Renewable Energy. Oh, they, the Heritage Foundation. Yeah, yeah isn't that nice? <laughs> they have an, a, a name that says Heritage. <laughs> so, of course, this is a good patriotic... I'm sorry, the Heritage Foundation is part of an organization that I think is acting in a way which is entirely un-American. And I'm not saying 
that you know their pol politics are 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 bad. I'm saying that they're doing things that are bad for America, like costing Americans jobs that are going overseas. Yeah, let's move on here. Yeah, let's get away Got from that. Something from Queen Technical. We here. do. The U.S. is responsible for 26 percent of global warming emissions and is morally responsible morally responsible to solve it well you know in, in, <laughs> in duh <laughs> yeah in the in the in the paradigm that we've got that comes from Ayn Rand and and the and the so-called free market moral responsibility means making as much money as you can so <laughs> you know the 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 objectivist view which supports that is not objective it comes from the subjective thing that the, the only thing, idea that the only thing that's important is money. Well, Ayn Rand, who was this objective person. Objectivist. Objectivist. Big difference yes. between. She spent her last days on welfare. Yeah. Big difference between objectivist and objective. Objective, yep. And well, this is a good techie, techie article. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. They're asking the question what is the reality of U.S. contributions to global warming and the rest of the world? Right. And it's a good article to look up. There's good comparative maps of overall ox CO2 emissions over the years beginning in 1901. You can see how it's been increasing in yeah. the U and in the world. Yep. But it's decreasing in, in um, Europe already. Well, in 20, as of 2016, the USA had contributed more CO2 than any other country or region. The only grouping close was the U EU with its 28 countries versus one. Yeah. <laughs> and well. the EU mines coal and they've got some heavy industrial regions. Yep. China's net c contribution is less than half of the USA's. India's contribution is off the map. They're so small. Okay. Yeah. And India's a big country. Well, they've only started developing this stuff. Very they're, recently. they're moving. But you know, yeah, on I, a I, per capita basis, as Saudi a, Arabia is a bit worse than the USA per, per capita. Per capita, Australia is only a little bit worse. Canada doesn't even look good, <laughs> but, but and some of the stands are pretty good. China and India barely visible per capita. But that is because they started late. Well, they also have a lot of people. Yes. Yeah. Well, they have a lot of people. Okay. Should we go on? Yeah, we got another picture here. We are up. up to Saturday, March 9th, and we have a picture of a collapse. Yeah. Let's There's look the at collapse. That. that is Greenland ice collapsing. This is disturbing. This this particular. Well, this article. is. This, this is. This comes from the Weather Channel. It is the Weather Channel, and what yeah. it says is <laughs> winter rain on Greenland's ice sheet is not supposed to happen. But it's becoming more frequent. It should and not. And that's significant. Yeah. We'll talk about it that. It should in not a rain in the winter in Greenland. But winter rain is becoming increasingly common on parts of its ice sheet. This leads to rapid ice melt events and is priming the ice for future melting, a study says. You know, I'm disturbed by the fact that the conservative, so called conservative media, Claims that we're still in a, in a in a in a climate change hiatus. Yeah, I mean this is mind-bogglingly <laughs> dumb. It's like well, looking they're at picking, they're picking the numbers. You know, <laughs> it's like taking a person's temperature and saying, "Wow, you have a temperature of a hundred of hundred and five degrees, but you'll be okay. You were you were only a hundred and one yesterday, yes. and ninety eight point <laughs> six the day before that. The average." <laughs> Well, what they're believing is this winter rain that doesn't ever, that's supposed to happen may be a result of the of, of a climate driven shift in the jet stream. And we've talked about we that. We have indeed. The rain is triggering unprecedented sudden melting events yes. in a vicious feedback loop. Yes. Okay. So if if the ice melts in the Arctic, it doesn't change ocean levels, just like the ice in a drink when it melts, it, But on Greenland it but does. But on Greenland is land, that's water going right into the sea yep. and it's raising the ocean yep. levels. Yep, that's right. And, and you know how you can compare those? If you take a glass and you put an ice cube in it and you, yeah. and you fill it with water, yeah. when the ice cube melts, the water level exactly. is the same. Exactly. But if you take a glass and you, pu you, you put an ice cube in it and you let it melt, while well, you've also got another glass with just an ice cube, 
Yeah. And then you pour that into the first glass, <laughs> it's going it's to go, go up. Okay. Well, a melting associated with rain has doubled during the summer and tripled in, in the winter. It's not supposed to happen at all. If the 660,000 square mile ice sheet over Greenland melts completely, sea levels would rise some 23 feet. Which puts New York City underwater. Coastal population centers all around the world. All over the world. What we would have is a huge, you know, Donald Trump is worried about, about, about refugees and saying you can't come into this country. If this happens, we're going to have we're going to have the refugees refugees <laughs> that are just in unbelievable numbers, and we're going to have to find places for them to live. Yeah. Well, apropos of that, Atlanta is the fastest growing place in the United States right now, yeah. and shorefront property is going unsold because they can't get it. They can't get the Buyers. insurance. Yeah. Well, they can't get insurance. Okay. Should we move on from that one? Yeah. We we're talking about a. From one from Clean Technical. We do indeed. While the Green New Deal cuts consumer energy costs and unemployment. Now we're going to hit this again later in the in this show. Oh, we will. We yeah. will. Critics claim that the Green New Deal is unaffordable. Now we will get back to that. Yep. We'll we'll find out about that. We conclude. And by the way, this is an article that was written by Mark J Jacobson, who is an expert on this. I mean. Really, okay. he's really an expert on this. We've talked many times about things that he has said in the past. We conclude the opposite is true. The benefits of the of clean energy greatly exceed the costs. Similar findings that 100% renewable energy systems are low cost come from 10 other independent research groups, one of which is not the Heritage Foundation. <laughs> Now we've talked about the Green New Deal enough. Do you think enough? Do you think we have to explain it again to well, our users? The Green New Deal. Just I have a. I got a paragraph here that explains it. Go very with well. it if you want. It's a proposal to transition the U United States entirely to clean, renewable, zero emission energy. It's not a deal. It's a deal to make a deal. It's. It is. Okay. And it is. As we speak, it is unfolding. Yes. So it, it's. Proposal is to in transfer the U.S. entirely to clean, renewable, zero emission energy in all energy sectors, not just electricity. Right. To promote the removal of carbon from the air through natural reforestation and land preservation, right. not pulling it out of the air and sinking it into oh, the There holes. was a wonderful article about that, and I don't remember whether it's in this particular edition of the, of the show or not, but if there isn't in case there isn't, um, Michael Barnard, who is also a, a, an expert, did an analysis of the cost of co ec extracting CO2 from the atmosphere. It's, it's expensive. It's unbelievable. <laughs> it, would take, it would take getting 100% of the carbon dioxide out of all of the air in 11 superdomes to get one ton of CO2. Wow. It More is expensive crazy. than I thought. It's crazy yeah, expensive. It's crazy huh? expensive. So, um, did I read this? Uh, yes, I did. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I'm losing my way. Well, we've I we have I have read this, and you've commented. Well, you, ten independent nuclear ten independent research groups find that 100% renewable energy systems are low cost without fossil fuels or nuclear power. Now they will cost some select people a lot of money. Uh huh. And who are they? Very, 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 very rich people. Not the one percent, not the one percent of the one percent, <laughs> but the half of one percent of the one percent of the one percent. Well, this unfortunately, is, they're powerful people. They're powerful people, and they have bought themselves an American um, political system, and they are pulling the strings in the Senate, even as we speak. But, well, but if if you want to look this one up, it's on Clean Technical. There is a very interesting and informative image on there. Yeah. And I got a copy of the image. I've been looking at it. You can learn a lot just from looking at this image. Yeah. It's called Reducing Consumer Costs, Economic Costs, and Unemployment. Yeah. So pull now, that image up and New look Deal at it. The Green New Deal is about 
um, um, in addition to energy, it has to do with making sure that everybody who wants a job has got it's it. It's more than just energy. It's making yep. sure that, you know, that, that everybody has affordable health care. And if you think about that, if everybody has health care, it means we will not f have a large percentage of the population depending upon emergency rooms for their health care, which will cut the cost which of health care enormously. It's costing us a lot of money right it, now. It comes out of our we, own, uh, we, out of the Everybody health, winds up paying for it. it, it right. And it will also mean that, that we will not have to deal with a large unemployed population. What we will wind up with is what I call trickle-up economics. Yeah. Yeah, what's wrong with that? <laughs> if you're up, <laughs> I don't know. Okay, that's the way it's supposed to work, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it is. Okay, we have a picture. Got a picture coming up. And there it is. Well, and we, we have to explain that. that picture. And that is well, that's uh, an that's that's an oil rig in the North Sea. Well, it's not quite in the North Sea yet. It's still in port. Oh. <laughs> Okay, the, my note says North Sea oil. It so says it's heading, Northeast. It's yeah, I know to the, it's heading well, it's to the North yet. Sea. It's not yet, not there yet. At least that's the way I interpret <laughs> that. This is from Clean Technica. Oh, we already said that, didn't we? Yeah. Well, this is interesting. Yeah. The Norwegian Sovereign Wealth Fund to yes. divest from oil and gas exploration stocks. Now you're going to have to explain what the big Sovereign de big deal. Wealth Fund is. The Norwegian Government Pension Fund Global. So it's is, like Social Security for the Norwegians. It, it kind of is, yeah. But it's a little bit more generous. It's a little bit more generous, yeah. and it also has a positive value that is absolutely huge. It is the largest sovereign wealth fund in the world. So that's pretty huge. Yeah, it's much <laughs> bigger than anything the United States has. Well, why aren't we number one? Well, with investments totaling $1 trillion, that's under management, <laughs> what have we got? Have we got? A, have we even got a positive value? In announce, if we had a positive value in yeah. in Social Security, yeah. Congress would rate it. Yeah, somebody's rating it now. Yeah, it announced that it will phase out oil and gas exploration companies from its portfolio. And by the way, that's about twelve billion dollars worth of stock they're going to sell. So for shareholders in those companies, this is not good news unless you plan on buying stock in which case it's not really good long-term news, news news anyway i think well our friend bill mckibben has a comment to make okay huge 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 win <laughs> norwegian government which is an oil state is recommending that the world's largest sovereign wealth fund fully divest from all fossil fuels now i, I want this will send shock waves through the energy yeah, sector. Yeah, and, and you should, you, let's bear in mind, the, the way this, this fund got so rich yeah. was by investing in oil and gas. Well, Norway's always been big in oil and gas. It's been big in oil and gas since the 1950s or 1960s. That's, when that's they pretty started, close to always. They started getting this stuff. And by the way, the way that, that picture works, let's have that back up. If it. you look to the right of that oil platform, you see a ship. And Looks like a ship. I don't know what that ship is, but I think maybe it's a big ocean-going tugboat. Is that possible? I would say, in other words, to get it out to where they're going to bring it. Yeah, they, these these. Well, these things aren't self-powered, so they're they not self-powered, but they're registered as ships. Are they? Yeah, the the deep. Um, um, what was that called? Uh, the one that that burned up in, in the Gulf of Mexico, Deep Ocean Horizon or something like that? Very close to it. If that's not it, it's yeah. just... That was registered deep as Deep Water ship. Horizon or something like port. that. Yeah. They're, they're registered as, as ships. a ship, huh? I would register them as barges because they're not self-powered, but, you know, there is such a thing as a powered barge, so who knows? <laughs> anyway, should we move on? Well, is this from the articles. A oh, clear yes. signal that oil and gas companies present an unacceptable risk. Yes. From That's what it's all about. People who have made a lot of money on that risk. In exactly. The past. So they know what yes, they're doing. They know what they're doing. Okay, we're up to Sunday, March 10th, with an item from Clean Technica. Study finds dumping coal will bring the U.S. in line <laughs> with the Paris Climate Accord goals. <laughs> okay. That's interesting. A study by physics, economics, and science systems, uh, system science departments at Portland State University says the U.S. could meet 
the Paris climate commitments it made in 2015 simply by eliminating coal as a source of electric energy by 2024. That's Portland, Oregon, by the way. Yeah, and by 2024, we might be out of coal anyway. <laughs> Not because we run out of coal, but just but we've, because we, we've stopped it's mining closing it down. It's, it is an economic. That's right. If you can't make money on it, you're not going to do it. That's right. Unless you're Donald Trump, of course, because he can make money on debt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, okay. this is a, an interesting takeaway. Siting and permitting for a new, nu new nuclear power plant generally takes about 12 years in the U.S. Yes. We've talked about that. Yes. So, you know, that in itself is a big barrier. Yes, to nuclear. To nuclear. Well, we're talking about coal here, and coal is... Has there's no oh okay where the nuclear came from is U U S could make up for coal for its loss of coal by building twelve new nuclear power facilities yeah but or that doesn't look likely it's going to happen by building m maybe thirty new renewable energy facilities and That's I got where news for you go. Tom we're going to have more than thirty new That's new where it's going to go renewable energy company uh, or uh, uh, plants in the next six years it's just going to happen. Okay, should we go on to I'm the... I'm just trying to read and see if i got anything else to say. The only okay. hope is that economic considerations take precedence over political rhetoric. <laughs> the only Something hope is that... Something actually seems to be happening in some areas. Yeah, the only the hope that we've got... Is it continues to decline. Yeah, is that it's the, money, guys. The conservatives... The it's only money. hope is that conservatives <laughs> allow the free market to be free. <laughs> oh, my oh, gosh. Man, what is going on here? <laughs> Socialism. I'm not afraid of socialism. <laughs> Benjamin Franklin was a socialist. <laughs> he was, huh? Well, he, he advocated that the federal government should own a post office system. Yeah, he did, yeah. There you yeah. go. That's socialism. Yeah, even before people talked about socialism. Okay, should well, we, we go? we got an interesting picture coming up. We do. Here. It's a lovely picture. There and that, go. my friends, is a Boyd. A Boyd? A Boyd. I knew a Boyd once. <laughs> I think I went to school with him. Okay. Well, well, that happens to be a parakeet. Which is brought to us by the BBC. It is. And in is, Haiti. In Haiti. The university is planning a green revolution. <laughs> North Haiti Christian University is a place where students can learn about sustainable agriculture. This is a funny article. People should read this just because it's funny. <laughs> in a country where deforestation earns as many superlatives as poverty, it has had a generations-long ban on tree felling on its 19-acre campus. This produced a haven for rare endemic birds. Well, now, yeah, there's 30 different species that, <laughs> that are, they must be hiding on a campus, you know. They probably know what's going on. Well, <laughs> they've got a place to live. That's it. They're not yeah. interested in going away. But you know what's funny about this article is the people talking about, you know, here you are in a Christian university in Haiti, and you say, well, um, I'm going to show you a picture of an owl, and the students cover their <laughs> eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the article said that. Explain why. Well, the, you know, they're in a place where there's a lot of superstition in Haiti. Yeah, there is. You know, yeah. and they and still believe in voodoo down there. It, well, I don't think it's just that they believe in it. They actually it's, practice they it. practice it. Yeah. yeah, it's a big religion in Haiti. It is. Yeah, and it's, literally, I mean, it's it, it is a religion. There's no question about it. And uh, I've, you know known people who, is, who have come up against it and they say you, you don't want to mess around with these people unless you know what you're doing. Well this North Christian, North Haiti Christian University is getting on the ball. Yep. They are promoting a major reforestation I initiative which seeks to plant one and a half million trees which includes coffee and cacao which we spoke about last right. year because they'll grow under a forest canopy. Right. So they know what they're doing. I think so. Yeah, and it is a very, I enjoyed that article very much. That was interesting. It was, it was fun, indeed. Yeah. Okay, we're up to an article from Politico. We're still on Sunday, March 10th. Unfortunately. Or Unfortunately. <laughs> and I, I put up a, a picture, but I put it up early, so it's well, not we'll this leave, article. We'll, 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 we'll refrain from using we'll that picture. We'll refrain from using, we'll put these guys up. <laughs> Who are they? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the bogus number at the center of the GOP's new Green New Deal attack. Now, we were talking about this earlier, and Before here the it show is. started. No, yeah. no, during the show I said we're going to get back to this business about the Green New Deal and how people are attacking, saying that it's going to cost so much money. 
Yeah. yeah. Well, I okay. guess what I was talking about beforehand was uh, if you approach the Republicans about what's in the Green New Deal, oh, they yeah. generally support it. But as soon as you say Green New Deal, it, my eyes slam shut, guys. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Republicans, and I, I want to tell you, this is not all Republicans, but nevertheless, I'm just reading you what Politico says. Republicans claim the Green New Deal would cost $93 trillion. $93 trillion. The U.S. Great gross, the gross domestic product today is less than $20 trillion. Well, they're just saying <laughs> so, it's not possible to do it. <laughs> A number that would dwarf the economic output of every nation on Earth. The number supposedly originated with a report by a conservative think tank, the American Action Forum, but the American Action th Think Tank didn't d didn't produce it. So we're no, the figure is just bogus. It's politics. <laughs> Somebody made up a Somebody number. Somebody made up a number. And then they said, "Oh yeah, it's those guys over there. They did it." And the American Action Think Tank is disclaiming this. They're saying, "Yeah, they are." We're, we we didn't no do no it. don't look at us. We that is our it. number. Nevertheless, it's all over the place. You know, so how do you deal with that? Well, somebody is making things up and other people are repeating the lie. Something like that. Yeah. Something like that. But what we're not thinking about, and this comes from the United Nations, the global cost is as much as $69 trillion from even a modest rise in global temperatures. Yeah. So that's, that's costing us anyhow. Yeah. So we spend this this money, it's offset by well, what it's saving what us. What we've got here is a situation where we've got a large group of people, of I should say we've got a large group of organizations, there's a dozen of them or more, who are profoundly threatened by renewable energy and they want to stop it because it's going to stop them from making money in the future. You just said it all. That's exactly and what's going on. They, uh, under a, under a, uh, and they're powerful. Yeah, and under a narrative where they can say what they want, because they can in the United States, they can say everything, anything they want, and they can say, We're, we are persons. We've got freedom of speech. We can say anything we want. They say things that happen not to be true. And those things that are, happen not to be true are intended specifically to f threaten people, frighten people, whatever, about renewable energy so it won't be installed. So well, that's what's going on. I mean, it's, it's, I've it's said politics. it before. I've said it before. Yeah, you're going to say it again. The, the relationship between objectivity and objectivism, which is Ayn Rand's <laughs> political yeah, yeah. philosophy that the, um, a bunch of so-called conservatives have taken up, the relationship between ob objectivity and objectivism is exactly the same, except for the language and uh, take on the political slant, which is not all that different, between truth and pravda. <laughs> well, pravda means truth in Russian. In Russian, and it was the <laughs> name that the, that the Russian con uh, Communist Party had for its party. For the newspaper. Newspaper. Which and was never the truth. It was never the <laughs> truth. And obje objectivism is never objective. <laughs> it isn't, it, it's based on subjective evaluation that money is the only thing that's important. <laughs> All right, money is the only thing important. Let's tell that to somebody on. who's in love. and huh? you'll f tell, tell, tell somebody in love that money is the imp only important thing and <laughs> see what happens. Well, we got another picture coming up. You know, I'll give you I'll give you a two dollar an hour raise if you'll just ditch your girlfriend. <laughs> okay, we have another picture coming up, and, this and we're is coming Monday, up to March Monday, 11th. March eleventh. The picture is already there. Wow, the picture is already yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Okay, this is from the hill. That's, that's windmills, isn't it? I don't think so. A hundred percent. The one hundred percent renewables moonshot. We're closer than you think. You know, I just realized that picture is all about radiation. Yeah. Solar radiation. Yeah. <laughs> it reminds me of Jason um, uh, Cooper's story about he loves uh, nuclear reactors, but we only need one. And it's the one that's 93 million miles away. <laughs> okay. Good point. This is from The Hill, and, and you read the title I already. I read the title already. Advocates for 100% renewable energy compare the effort needed to meet that goal to, to putting a person on the moon. 
but we are closer to 100% renewable energy today than we were to the moon in, two, in 1961 when President Cam Kennedy made his famous plan, pledge to get us to the moon. Well, this, came, this comes right from the article. Yeah. We have unleashed powerful climatic forces, climactic forces, yep. that can't just be shut off like a dirty, obsolete coal plant. Right. We must focus on how to achieve it. Yep. We have developed the technologies. Total solar and wind potential is more than 14 times current electric supply. How about so that? So the potential is out there. Yeah, and it's However, cheap. we need a challenging target date to get Congress to act. Yes. And the final sentence here is important. We can't afford not to make the transition. Okay. We're up to an article from the Japan Times. Aha. Uh -huh. so I guess we can keep us up there. <laughs> yes, we can. I'm trying to figure out what to do. 52,000 still displaced as Japan marks eight years since the Fukushima nuclear crisis. Yep. Japan marked the eighth anniversary of the devastating earthquake and tsunami in northeastern Japan that left more than 15,000 people dead and triggered a nuclear disaster that was one of the world's worst. Well, in case you don't remember it, at TEPCO's Fukushima number one, an unprecedented triple meltdown occurred. Yep. Okay, due to damage from the tsunami. And this is now, what did it say, eight years later? Yep. Some 1,300 people are still living in temporary housing. In March 2021, the government was scheduled to re disband the reconstruction agency that was established to rebuild all of this. And they're not, they're, they can't. Yeah. They're going to keep it going. They're going to keep it going. Decommissioning of the crippled nuclear plant is expected to take decades. It will they, take decades. They have a long-term problem They have got to the here. point now where they've got a little bitty robot that has gone into the one of the of the reactors and actually touched and 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 moved a little bit of the spent fuel. Well, it's people it's, can't go in there. No. They, 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 they'll, they'll, they'll die before they can come out. That's right. Okay, our next item is this from one's the got a picture too. Public News Service. Uh, yes, this is Cat. I keep wanting to call that Camp Jejun, but it's it's Camp Camp Lejeune, and uh, this is after the picture is after Hurricane Florence, and this is from Public News Service. Well, Camp Lejeune, rather large Marine Corps camp yep. on the East Coast. Almost everybody that joins the Marines goes there for basic. Yep, it's in the. I guess it's South Carolina. It's right on the border of the Carolinas. Yep. And it's a beautiful place. They yep. got a nice beach there. It's right on yep. the shore. This picture probably comes from the shore, comes from the I beach. It looks like it. It kind of looks like it. Yeah, Camp Lejeune actually is in North Carolina, but as you said, it's, it's near. It's right on the border. Near. Yep. Hurricane Florence left approximately $3.6 billion of damage just at Camp Lejeune in North Carolina. Bingo. And a group of former military leaders and advisors will give testimony before Congress saying the partisan battle over climate change could harm our troops and national security. And they, they go to Congress to say this every year. They've been doing it year after year after year. And they've got a bunch of people who are just this, you know. Well, what's happening here is that uh, Extreme weather events have the potential to affect base training. <laughs> okay, so they're not able to get their job done because it's raining too much. <laughs> or because the wind is 90 <laughs> Or something miles like an that. Yeah. Yeah, by causing more black flag days when outdoor training is impossible. And by the way, the, the, the polar, the, 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 the uh, cyclonic storm in the Midwest right now, yeah. they've, they've had winds that have been 70 miles an hour. So this is, we're talking about it's a It's not a hurricane even. It's close to a hurricane. But it's, yeah, but it's, it's not yet there. It's very close. Yeah. But it's, it isn't, it didn't develop over water. It developed over, over land, over land in happen. the winter. This is, you know, this is climate chaos. And Donald Trump is probably going to say, climate change, where are you? We need warmer weather. But, you know, he's well, done that in that's the past. A, that's why they're complaining about this. A lack yes. of training and preparation presents dangerous conditions for troops. Right. And is important for national security. Right. Okay. We're to, we are up to Tuesday, March 12th, with an item from PV Magazine International. This is a good article. <coughs> it is. Renewables made up almost 65% of net power production in Germany 
last week. This is for a week. Just for a Re week. Well, it's, a lot of it's happening in Germany. Yeah. They, renewable. We're renewable. just talking about one week here. <laughs> yes. Just, but it is a whole week. Re this is not something that happened on Thursday afternoon. This is something that went for the whole, whole week. week long. Renewable energy had a 64.8 share of electricity generation, according to a solar research institute, Fraunhofer ISE. This achievement was mainly due to strong production from wind facilities. Wind power supplied, wind power alone supplied 48.8 percent of the electricity. So wind power alone provided almost 50 percent of Germany's electric demand for a almost week. half. Yeah. Almost half. Well, wind displaced both fossil fuel and nuclear together. Yes. Uh, That's an important note. And lignite coal contributed an average of 24 percent last year, but just supplied 12 percent last week. Yeah. Now lignite coal is not much dirty. more than peat. Yeah, it's very. We dirty. don't even burn it in this country. It's so cheap. Yeah. Lignite that they don't transport it any great distance. No, the mines are right there by the plant. Yep. They the plants are where the where the coal where right, the mines vice are. Versa, they yeah. put the they put the plants where the coal is. Okay, our next item is from Another CNN. Another coming up here. And we have a, this is disturbing. This is Colorado National Forest in Montana, 17 years after a fire. Yeah. What do you have for a title? 17 years after fire. <laughs> let's, let's, let, let me get it up. Okay. Climate change will take... Climate change will make a walk in the woods a much rarer pleasure. Yeah. Fires and drought exacerbated by climate change make new growth difficult for some species, especially in low elevation forests, a research study says. Some forests in the western United States have crossed, quote, a critical climatic threshold for post-fire fire tree generation, end quote. Well, what's It'll happening is that Douglas firs and the ponderosa pine constitute the majority of these forests. Yeah. And they're the ones that are hardest hit. Yeah, and they can't regrow. Now, in this particular area, I don't know what happened to the soil where that fire was, but the fire might have been so hot that it it destroyed the uh, fertility of the soil because that can happen. It could something like that must have happened. Yeah. For Seventeen years you'd expect but, see certainly to see saplings. Well, you would, but and of course the there. other thing is there's nothing there partly because the rainfall has been irregular and partly because it's been warmer than usual. So yeah, you know. th this comes from CNN and I've mentioned it before. They often have good videos. Yep. It is a nice. It's only short. Only two minutes of the video on this website. Right. And it's worth looking at. Right. And it's called How Climate Change Will Impact Your Region. Yes. And You're in short, kidding. it's in the, in the Northeast. The winter's going to be shorter. The summers are going to be longer. There's going to be more heat, more floods, and less health. More co mosquitoes, more ticks, more... more All of that stuff. Uh, woolly adelgids, more, you know, you name it. Anything you don't want, there's going to likely be more of it. Well, okay. It used to be a fire season, but devastating fires have become a reality all year long. Right. Okay. Had there not been such intense fires, these trees that you're looking at might have lived for centuries. Yes. We have an item coming up from Clean Technica. We do. We do, we, don't we? We do, yes. The largest community solar plus storage installation in Massachusetts is now open for business, and it's right nearby. It is indeed. The largest community solar plus storage farm in Massachusetts is in operation. The 7.1 megawatt Happy Hollow Community Solar Plus Storage Farm, really? That's the name? <laughs> Happy Hollow. <laughs> <laughs> was built at a former gravel pit in Winchenden, which is not that far from here. No, you go down Route 2, turn left. Yeah. It's, it's, it's near Gardner. It's, it's yeah. not far at all. It includes 3.3 megawatt hours of battery storage. Now, I guessed from this article that there's about 20,000 panels down there. So this, this is fairly large. It's it, 7.1 megawatts would pretty big. <laughs> if it were in Vermont, it would be the second largest um, solar installation in the state. Um, Which one's the largest one? We have a 20 megawatt. Um, I forget what town it's in. We Blood have five Blood. megawatts we, here. We have five me megawatts in Brattleboro, yeah. and I think a year ago that was the biggest. And that was special. And that was special. It was the biggest. It's certainly still the biggest that's net metered, but there's, I think it's Ludlow. They have a 20 megawatt array. 
I don't remember names well, so if anybody's yeah. watching up there, I'm, I well, got the facility wrong, is apologize. expected to generate nine million kilowatt hours of electricity each year. That's a goodly amount. It is. Okay, we're up to Wednesday, March yeah, 13th, we another, and we have an item here. here from Think Progress, and there is our picture. Another picture. That doesn't look too good. <laughs> <laughs> kind of <laughs> scary. Well, <coughs> that's a coal processing plant yeah, in Wyoming. The, the gray that you see in the sky is not coming from that smokestack. It's just gray it's, in the it's sky. It's a thunderstorm or something. <coughs> something, but that's, yeah. Okay, what do you got for a title? Wyoming's coal plants are so unprofitable. Republicans turn to a, quote, socialist program to save them. <laughs> Here we go. Here yeah. we go. What's, what's more important, our ideology or <laughs> money? Okay, it's money, especially it, if it comes, money talks. comes from other people to us. Money talks. Wyoming's recently enacted, uh, Wyoming recently enacted a law that forces utilities seeking to shut down unprofitable coal plants to try to sell them first and then buy back the power from the new owner even if cheaper power is available. This mirrors what we said right to start the show. This, yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's where we are. Okay, should so we... This is, an, this is an interesting takeaway. Yeah. Republicans have defined socialism to include all democratic proposals <laughs> to help stave off existential threat posed by fossil fuel emissions. In this world, <laughs> the GOP effort to use the government to force uneconomic fu fuel, fossil fuel plants to stay open is the most dangerous and self-destructive centrally planned socialist economy imaginable. <laughs> <laughs> They're talking out of both sides of their mouth. They sure are, and there's no question about it at this point. They're uh, doing it with one technology after another. One. Okay, our next item is from New Mexico Political Report. Okay, energy bills passage. Poor tens. I'm going to put it, put you up there. You are. Well, I'm going to Nobody put us up there. Nobody wants to see me. <laughs> I'm tired of looking at that picture. Yeah. Energy bill passage portends the end of coal era in New Mexico. New Mexico's legislature has formed, has moved uh, to Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham's desk a controversial bill designed to dramatically increase the amount of renewable energy used to produce electricity in New Mexico. The House passed the bill 43 to 22. It, it is supported by Governor Grisham. This is going to take New Mexico to 100% renewable uh, power. Well, the bill calls for a 50% renewable energy portfolio in the state by 2030, 80% by 2040, and 100% by 2050. Right, so it just means... They're doing it in steps. Th they are, but they're doing... Most, most states do this in steps, but, you know, we've talked about the states that have done it before. And that list of states that have, have, are committing to 100% renewable energy is growing and growing. And we've got, you know, like New York State is, is talking about this. Maine is talking about this. Why New, Vermont isn't talking about it? Well, it would be, except that we've got a governor who might stand in the way of that. He might. He yeah, might. he might. <laughs> <coughs> Pardon me. So, this is one that I find... This is, this I found very <coughs> interesting, very interesting. <coughs> picture up. <laughs> this is from Clean Technica. That is a sh giant round tarpaulin <laughs> sitting on a lake. Yeah. And these people are walking on that tarp. It's kind of like walk, walking on a waterbed, it's, I think. It's called, yeah, sort of, <laughs> very much so. Well, you can see in the picture what this guy's feet are doing to it. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's called floating solar. <laughs> it's actually called a floating solar trampoline. <laughs> yeah. And it sort of is like a big trampoline. Okay, have you got a, a title? Yeah, floating solar trampoline tested by Statcraft. Um, Statcraft's Albania unit, you know, it's Albania where this is being put in, bought a uniquely designed floating solar trampoline manufactured by Norwegian startup Ocean Sun for deployment, why, do, why does the startup have an English name? <laughs> for deployment, and, and it's going into Albania. This is a Norwegian startup Norwegian. installing. A, Don't think we talk about startup on uh, Stockcraft Stockcraft, this morning? Yeah. It's owned by the Norwegian government. Yeah. yeah. Okay, it, um, it is going in for deployment at the Banja or Banya Reservoir in Albania. 
The two megawatt array consists of four floating units, each of half a megawatt, at a total cost, and this is the thing that I find especially interesting about this, of 2.3 million euros, which is 2.6 million dollars. I have no comparison for well, that. Well, but the thing is, um, two point, this, first of all, we have to understand this is the first system of this design to anywhere. go in anywhere. Yep. Which means that, you know, we're talking about rights law here with new technology. As the technology develops, the cost is going to decline. And you said earlier when we were talking about this before the show, they don't have any, any, you know, any um, um, support infra uh, infrastructure for this stuff except for this just hanging there. trampoline. It's, 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 a, it's attached to the bottom. Yeah, you know, with chains or something, but it's it's anchored. it moves around a little bit. Somehow it's anchored, but the but the point is, the price of this, which is which is um, 1.3 million dollars per megawatt or 1.3 dollars per watt, is going to go down. Oh sure, and you this know, is the first one they're doing <clears throat> exactly. And as it goes down, these things are going to be installed in places other than Albania. Oh, sure. Albania doesn't have any money. They shopped around, I'm <laughs> sure, for the cheapest thing they could get, and here it is. And these, how much, how much space in this world is devoted to, um, is devoted to reservoirs? A, a lot. lot. A you lot of them right here in Vermont. Yeah, and and you know this kind of system could go in at reducing prices, and you know it's like. How is how is coal going to compete with this? They can't. Well, this this particular array is about a little bit less than half the size of the array we put in on Ferry Road. Right. Okay. And I I I'm going to put the picture up again. Okay. Because I'm going to try and explain what's going on. Yeah. The Ocean Sun design attaches a large number of panels on a membrane. That's what they call it. It's like a yeah. big tarp. Yeah. As a, as a modular unit, the modules are attached to the membrane using special mechanism which you're not right. they're not disclo disclosing yeah it enables good thermal contact with the water which means that the panels the are panels cooled. are more efficient they're yes. cooled yes okay and the membrane is carefully designed to withstand mechanical stress and sun exposure well as you can see by the picture people can walk on it people can walk on it okay the modules are in close contact with the water which i just said which yes. provides excellent cooling Yes. The anchored membrane system allows the PV modules to move with the harmonics of the waves. So right. it can bounce around if it's wind. A little bit, yeah. And it able to withstand winds of over 170 miles an hour. So this thing's when not going to blow away. When was the last time we had 170 mile an hour winds in Brattleboro? Wasn't it last week? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. So I, I uh, looked this up on the web. I looked up yeah. their website, and boy, it's so interesting what they're doing. I mean, it, they're wholly creating a new, a whole new field here. Yes. I mean, this is this is. I don't know what they were smoking when they thought this one up, but somebody was certainly thinking. Somebody was thinking, and most things that people smoke get in the way of thinking. <laughs> nevertheless, there it Even is. Even tobacco, huh? <laughs> I think, you know, anytime you're dealing with it, with something that's addictive, you're talking about getting in the way of judgment. Yeah. 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 Do okay. I buy cigarettes or do I eat? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One of well, the I think we're finished for, t for this week. We are, so. in fact. And so we should say goodbye. And so let's wave. Yeah. Goodbye, Bye, everybody. Come back next time. Well, yeah. Just <laughs>